hi y'all i am back um today i will be talking to y'all about a more serious topic um as y'all know i asked y'all to comment down in the comment section and let me know what y'all wanted to see on my channel well someone commented and said self-confidence and i feel like I feel like it was a really, really good idea. Um, not only because a lot of people my age struggles with it, but because it's it's not really a common topic that a lot of people talk about. Like not many people talk about self-confidence, how you build self-confidence. They just tell you you should love yourself and and you should love like who you are, but no one talks about how hard of a journey it is to actually get there, to love yourself, to build that self-confidence. So, today I'm not doing a how to love yourself video, I promise. But I will be um, telling my story on self-confidence and hoping that it reaches enough people to where, like, you know... It touches enough people, I would mean to say, to where it affects them and their view on their self, basically. But yeah, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get started. So, um, to start off, I want to tell y'all how I lost my self-confidence, like, where it all plummeted. And that happened my fifth grade year in elementary school when I started getting bullied because of my skin color. Like a lot of different people used to call me a lot of different names, but um, the ones that stuck were Charcoal and Blackie Chan. And I just, I didn't understand why I was being picked on on such a a matter that I couldn't I couldn't control like it's not like I could go to the store or I could say hey I want to be this color or whatnot like I was born with more pigment in my skin than other people so I just <laughs> I just felt like I don't know I felt like because I couldn't control this and because it wasn't something that I could fix that there was something wrong with me. I felt like I wasn't beautiful, like I wasn't pretty, like I wasn't approved by my peers. And uh, for the longest time, because I felt this way, I was trying to get approval from my peers. I was trying to make friends and become popular. And back then, the popular girls were the light-skinned girls. So, with me not being light-skinned, it kind of felt like I was trying to fit in even more. Like, I never actually did become friends with any of those girls. And I just felt like, I felt like the, um, like the pathetic dark-skinned girl who was just trying to fit in to make herself feel better type thing. And I don't... I don't really know how to explain that. I just know back then I wanted to be loved. I wanted to be approved. I wanted to feel beautiful. I wanted to feel pretty. I just, I wanted to be accepted by my peers. I didn't want to feel like something was wrong with me because I was dark skinned. And because of that, my self-confidence kind of dropped. I felt like everywhere I went, someone was talking about me. I felt like everywhere I went, someone would call me ugly. <laughs> And as I grew older, more issues started to surface. Like, as I grew older, I got a bigger stomach. I like to eat. So, once I hit, like, eighth grade, I was like, I want a flat stomach. I want an eight pack. <laughs> like, how was I going to, well, it was a six pack. How was I going to get a six pack if I didn't stop eating? Like, that was not going to happen. I thought just because I was like, well, if I go work out, then it'll be okay. <laughs> I mean... But it wasn't something that I wanted for myself. It was something that I wanted because I felt like if I had a flatter stomach, then I would be prettier. 
or I would be approved by society. And I mean, I was wrong. Like if you look, society hates everything. <laughs> like, some people love BBW, some people love skinny girls. Like no one, like it, basically there, there's no one on earth that everyone in society loves. Oprah. Plenty of people hate Oprah. I don't know how I love me some Oprah. But, I mean, plenty of people hate her. So, it's just like, after a while, like, I had to learn how to become comfortable in my own skin. And it took so long. Like, um, in sixth grade, I tried out for the cheerleading team because I wanted to be popular. And when I didn't make it, it made me feel sick so 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 much worse because I didn't make the chili team it made me feel worse because I felt like I still can't fit in with the group of like people think that if you become a chili team, you're guaranteed to become popular that is definitely not the case I am not popular and I've cheered for five years um, people might know my name but I mean I'm not a popular girl. Not everyone likes me. Not everyone knows me. But, I mean, at the time, I didn't know about that. I didn't care about that. I just I just wanted to fit in. I wanted to be accepted. I wanted to be approved of. I didn't want to feel broken. I didn't want to feel ugly. I just, I just wanted to be, I wanted to feel like, there was nothing wrong with me. So, once I finally, like, branched off and I, and I, like, started embracing myself, which I didn't start doing until my junior year of, um, my junior year of high school. And once I started doing that, I started noticing a significant change. I started smiling more. I was happier. And it wasn't because um, I was accepted by so many people. It was because I didn't allow people who did not accept me into my life. Like, if you don't like me because I'm dark-skinned, if you don't feel like I'm beautiful because I'm dark-skinned, then... You don't have to, you don't have to be around me. You don't have to talk to me. You don't have to be my friend. <laughs> I had to learn how to think positive thoughts about myself and block out the negativity. <laughs> and it, 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 it had, like, I promise you, I had to talk to one of the people who bullied me back in fifth grade. And I had to ask him, like, why? Why did you... Why did you make me feel like I was less than nothing because of something that I can't control? Like, if I could have went to the store and picked up my skin, I I'm, I mean, now I would choose dark skin because, you know, dark is beautiful, it's whatever. <laughs> but it's, it's just when I talked to him, he told me, he was like, I thought that you were confident in yourself. You, you may have been your self-esteem may not have been high, but me and the other people felt like we needed to break you because you seem so self-confident. I don't know how. Like, when I was in front of them and they were talking about me, I never let them know that it got to me, but it hit so hard. I went home and cried. It was so horrible to feel like I wasn't beautiful. And it was so horrible to know that someone wanted to kill my self-confidence and I led them. So, um, yeah, don't, don't let people break you. Don't let people kill you. And then even if they do, like, don't let them see it. Like me. I would go home and cry in the closet. Like, <laughs> oh, it's, it's, it was a, it was a struggle, but I mean, it, it even got to the point where I started following around a friend and I started trying to be like this friend because I felt like everyone liked her. And um, 
actually this friend was a really a good role model like like i could have done so much better like it was it was ridiculous but because i was trying to be approved it was it it didn't really matter if this person was a good girl or a naughty girl like it didn't matter to me i just wanted to be accepted and um as time went by like i thought that this girl was basically like the situation with the people who bullied me i thought that this girl was really self-confident and even though she's never admitted to me that she wasn't self-confident there was hints in our relationship in our friendship that shows that she's not as confident as she may seem but she didn't let anyone see that and um that's kind of what you what you have to be in this world it's like this year my senior year in high school there were so many opportunities where I could have broken, where I could have thought that I was ugly, disgusting, like just a whole bunch of like stupid, like just a whole bunch of things that I know I'm not. But if you let people get to you, if you let the negativity get to you, then you will start to believe it. Um. I have to learn the hard way that you are your biggest critic. When I let those people get in my head, I started to believe it. So I started telling myself these things. I started telling myself that I was ugly and I started telling myself that I had to dress a certain way or look a certain way and wear a certain hairstyle in order to be pretty. Or I had to make certain grades. I had to have a 4.2 GPA. I had to get into the best colleges. I like had to hang around the certain people like who gets the best grades in school in order to be smart. That's not the case. All my years of high school, I have taken honors classes and I felt like if I did not get an A, I wasn't smart enough. When there's people who are struggling in remedial classes. I mean, there's nothing wrong with struggling in a class, whether it's honors or remedial, but I just didn't, I didn't feel like I was smart enough, like my sophomore, my freshman and sophomore year, because I, my grades, I was making like B's or like a high C or something. But after a while, it wasn't me not being smart enough. It was, did I try hard enough? Did I understand the content? So, once again, when I say you are your biggest critic, if you allow yourself to think all of these negative thoughts about yourself, then you're going to start to believe it and your self-confidence is going to be little to none. But once you start to tell yourself the opposite of what everyone else is telling you or what people are whispering in your ears, if you if you strive to be the best, if you actually work on it, if you stay positive, positivity is the key. With me, I had to embrace myself. I couldn't let everyone tell me that I was something that I didn't want to be. So I strive towards being that person that I wanted to be. In order to be confident, you have to you have to be you. You have to love that you that you are. You can't try to be someone else and think that you're self-confident. You're not. And I had to learn that the hard way. It took me a long time. And I'm still, like, yes, I'm still working on it. I feel like, um, I mean, I can go to school. Like, for the longest time, I couldn't go to school without makeup. And if... Um, if I went to school without makeup on, I felt like I was ugly. I used to wear makeup every day, and I used, I felt like I was ugly. But now, I want to wake up, like, once every two weeks, and I'll bomb every day to school, but that doesn't mean I'm ugly. Like, it, it just, it takes positivity. Like, I did not like the fact that... 
I felt weird going to school without makeup. So I had to I had to stop that. I was like, no, I'm not I'm not going to school with makeup on today. And so I can feel comfortable in my own skin and so I can feel beautiful going to school without eyebrows and eyeshadow on. <laughs> and once once you can do that, once you can be confident in your own skin once you can be confident in your skills like embrace the things that you love you might love the weirdest things in the world like i i want to have a harry potter themed wedding so many people are going to call me weird and whatever else but do i care no i do not i feel like a Harry Potter themed wedding is the best thing in the world. It's unique. No one else, like, I mean, I'm pretty sure someone else has thought about it. But it's not something that a lot of people think about. I mean, tons of people have beach weddings. Tons of people have Cinderella weddings. But how many people have Harry Potter weddings? I mean, come on now. But my own, my story ends with, with this. Like, once I open myself up once I once I allow people to see the real me and I just did not care anymore once um once that happened and I started telling myself that I was beautiful and telling myself that I didn't need makeup on or I didn't need straight hair or I didn't need to be light skinned I didn't need to be skinny that's when I, I just, I don't, I glowed. I smile more. I laugh a whole lot more. And those aren't forced. They're real. I'm the person that I want to be. Um, there's a lot, of, there is still a lot of times where I struggle with not having a flat stomach or not having long hair. But in the end, it's, like I say, it only matters if you don't like it yourself. And it's not because someone else is saying this or whispering this in your ear. If you don't like something about yourself, then change it. But make sure it's something that you don't like. And it's not something that others don't like. Because I've spent so many years trying to change the person I was so I can be accepted or approved and in the end i i needed to change what i didn't like about myself so i can feel better about myself not so other people could feel better about myself like that doesn't that doesn't even make sense like you don't have to change to be what like what other people want you to be if people don't accept you for who you are then it really it doesn't matter basically and looking back on it i think it's the dumbest thing in the world because all of these people who were talking about me or making me feel less than what i was they have their own issues and i'm sitting here thinking they're perfect when the case is they're not i'm not perfect there is no perfect person in this world, but you're not gonna you're not gonna have self confidence if you think the worst of yourself. If you allow people to tell you things that isn't true, like a lot of people tell me that I'm mean. I can be, <laughs> but I know that I'm a kind person. I know that I have a good heart. A lot of people tell me that I'm ugly. I know that I'm not. I know that I am a beautiful woman. A lot of people tell me that I'm weak. Well, not physically. I mean, physically, I'm strong. But mentally, emotionally, I have been through a lot. And I've, I've, I've learned from a lot. A lot of people tell me that a lot of people really think that I'm dumb. But I'm really an intelligent young woman. And... It kills me. It, I hate it when someone calls me stupid or when someone that assumes that because I act a certain way around my friends because I let loose around my friends or in the classroom that I don't know how to be intelligent, that I don't know 
like I'm I'm very intelligent and I don't mind like showing that off like I might look like oh I'm crazy or I don't know a lot but if you check my grades I'm a whole lot smarter than I may seem but I don't let that hold me back I don't let that be the reason of why I'm not doing what I feel like I need to or why I don't feel the best possible way about myself that I should <laughs> And I'm saying this specifically for the person that asked me to do the video. I want to say that you are beautiful. Don't let anyone take... Ooh, not going to cry. <laughs> Don't let anyone take that away from you. Like, you are an amazing person. Um, there's so many things. I could go on and on and on about you as a person. There are so many things that you have. You have a great personality. You are kind. You amazing dancer. You know, I'm not calling you out, but I'm just saying. Um, to be more self-confident with yourself. If you feel like you're battling yourself, that's different from battling someone else. Like if you say in your mind, Oh, I don't like this about myself, once again, you are your biggest critic. So you're gonna feel like you're gonna feel like you're not this way. But make sure it's because of something that you don't like and not something that society doesn't like. Like, sometimes not being self-confident can not blah, 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 not being self-confident can build you, can build your self-confidence. With me trying out for the cheerleading team every year, I feel like I'm not gonna make the team again. And every year I use that I feed on that. <sighs> okay. I didn't think I was gonna make it this year, but uh, I mean last year. But if I work twice as hard this year, then I'm pretty sure I'm gonna make it. Like, there's a difference between like no self confidence and just you know being humble, if you know what I mean. So don't don't think that you have to have this really big ego in order to be self-confident because you start to notice that people that have these really huge egos they're not self-confident at all they're saying this stuff because that's what they that's what they want um that's what they want to to feel about themselves and they don't let what others have to say about you affect how you feel about you. I've said this a thousand times in this video, I know, but that's the biggest key on self-confidence. <laughs> you have to believe it. You have to actually feel that way in order for it to, in order for your self-confidence to rise. And it took me so long. It's not an easy journey. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna sit here and say, oh, it's easy just believe in yourself and it's gonna, no. It's, it's repetitive. It's a mind game. You have to rebuild your mind. Because if you let someone tell you that you're not beautiful or that you're not smart or that you're fat or that you're this or that you're that, you start to believe it. So you have to, and it, it, it kind of, it tears your mind. It destroys it. So you kind of have to, you have to reconstruct your mind to think a complete completely different way and it is not easy it's a lot of tears it's a lot of struggling it's a lot of fights with yourself but once you get to the end of that road I promise you it is worth it with me no one no one can tell me that I'm stupid no one can tell me that I am ugly I might say myself that I'm fat but I know like that my size like a lot of people would kill to be my size I know like, I don't have the best figure in the world, but I have one. So, once you can build yourself up, once you, once you can reconstruct your mind, it is completely worth it. And you can look back on times like this and you can think, like now I think how ridiculous it is and how like crazy it was that I actually believed those things about me. But I promise you, once you get to once you get to the point where you want to be with your confidence, nobody can take that away from you. It's there. And you can't allow you can't allow people to 
during your journey. You cannot allow people to continue to tear you down. Most of the time, when I would take a step forward, I would get pushed back like five steps. It was it was hard. It was a lot of fighting through it, but it worked. You have to know what type of person you are in order to become self-confident. Because without knowing who you are as a person, you can't embrace that person. You can't love that person. And without loving that person, you have no self-confidence at all. But I'm going to go ahead and end this video because it's super long. <laughs> and I did not mean for it to be this long. I'm so sorry, you guys. But um, this is a really touchy subject for me. But um, make sure y'all go down in the comment section um comment how you think this video went subjects like topics that you think i could have touched on topics that i should not have touched on let me know what you want to see if y'all say story time or vlog or something like that be specific and let me know like exactly what you want to see and I'll, i promise y'all i will try to deliver um make sure you like Make sure you subscribe, tell your friends to subscribe, and I will see you guys soon. Thank you so, so much for the support, you guys. I love you. Bye.